So you think you might have a bad circuit breaker. It's either continuously tripping or you've noticed a buzzing sound coming out of your circuit breaker panel. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to troubleshoot that circuit breaker. Now to perform the check on the circuit breaker, you're going to need a multimeter. Not required, but handy is a contactless voltage checker, a common flathead screwdriver, and a roll of painter's tape. Okay, step one is going to be to remove the outer door and panel on your circuit breaker panel. For that, you'll just need your flathead screwdriver. Now, whatever kind of panel you have, you most likely have four screws that are going to hold the outer door on. So first, remove those screws. Now, before you remove the last screw and take the door off, one important safety tip is to flip off the main breaker. Now at your home, this is a sub panel. It's probably going to look a little bit different. You're going to have your main breaker up here and all you do is simply flip that off. So once you've got your main breaker off, remove this last screw and then simply remove the outer door. Now your circuit breaker panel at home may not have another panel. My demonstration sub panel here does. So I'll have four more screws to take off to be able to access the circuit breakers. Now you can see that the circuit breaker and all the wires are exposed. Now remember, on your home circuit breaker panel, you're most likely going to have two hot wires coming in from the top. Those are still hot, so do not ever touch those. Also, never touch anything inside the circuit breaker panel that you don't need to touch. It's good practice to only touch what you have to. Always safety first. Okay, now that we have access to the circuit breakers in the panel, Another handy tool is a contactless voltage tester, such as this one. You don't actually have to touch anything, but when you come up to wires that have electricity, it's going to vibrate orange and green, just like that. And when it vibrates like that, that means that there's still power. So we're going to flip this off. Now, since this is my demonstration sub panel, I'm able to remove power from it by a wall plug. Like I said, at your house, you're gonna have your main service connects up here coming in through the top. Those are the two big, usually black wires that are coming in. Those you cannot turn off. Okay, now that we've shut power off uh, to the circuit breaker panel, everything from your service connection down is now powered down and it will not have electricity on it, but again, don't touch anything you don't need to. Okay, earlier we marked the bad circuit breaker there with the green painter's tape, so that way we can easily identify which one we're changing. So the first step is we want to take off the load wire, which is going to be the black wire that's coming into the breaker itself. With your flathead, you're simply going to loosen the screw, and pull out the black wire. Now, if it's a double pole circuit breaker, which means it's the wider ones that have two inputs, you're gonna have to remove both of those black wires. And it's a good idea to mark one of them with masking tape as top, or mark both of them, one top, one bottom, just for easy identification later on. So now that we've got the load wire removed from the circuit breaker, the only thing left holding this circuit breaker in is the clips onto the rail. So we're going to gently rock the circuit breaker from inward to outward to remove it from the hook. So rock inward to outward and pull and remove that right from the hook. Okay, so that's for the square D clip-in circuit breaker. There's no screws required to remove this circuit breaker from the panel. Now this is my demonstration sub panel. So for that reason, I've actually installed two different types of square D 15 amp breakers. This one here is your typical circuit breaker. And this one here, as you can see, has a screw that screws right into the hot bus bar there you're gonna to have to remove that screw to then 
rock out that circuit breaker. Okay, now that we've got the circuit breaker removed, we can troubleshoot it with our multimeter here. Now we have the multimeter in the ohms position for a continuity check. And what we're gonna do, the circuit breaker is currently in the on position. So you're gonna put one terminal, doesn't matter red or black, onto the load screw there. And then the other terminal is there on the bus bar clip. So with the circuit breaker in the on position, you should get continuity. If you do not get continuity, then the circuit breaker has malfunctioned and the switch inside is broken. Now with it in the off position, we should get no continuity. So we recheck the same test here. So load screw and then no continuity. So this circuit breaker is actually good. But another thing to keep in mind is that check can check good and it still could be bad. If you've got discoloring anywhere in this area, if you've got cracks in it, or if you physically see any damage, it smells funny. If you rattle it around and you hear a lot of pieces moving around, then it's no good. Also, if you've heard it buzzing, then it's a good idea to just go ahead and replace it. Now, if you've got the circuit breaker into the on position and you perform the test, you touch the load screw, you touch the terminal, here for the bus bar and you're not getting continuity it says ol then your circuit breaker is open inside the switch is not making contact and it needs replaced now there are a few different reasons why you might have a circuit breaker that's continuously tripping overheating or malfunctioning one of the most common reasons is you've just overloaded that circuit all that means is you might have a hair dryer as well as a space heater plugged in either to the same outlet or two different outlets even in the same room that's on that same circuit breaker. So one thing to check is just to unplug those two appliances and see if the circuit breaker resets. If it does, then problem solved. You're just gonna have to move one of those appliances onto another circuit or use one at a time. Okay, now that you've determined that your circuit breaker needs replaced, the best thing to do since you have it out is to take it with you to the hardware store and do a one-for-one -one swap. Now, circuit breakers have an amperage rating right on the front of it. The most common are 15 and 20 amp breakers in your home electrical panel. And if you have a 20 amp breaker, that means that it will handle about 80% 16 amps all the time. Now what it will do is it will handle more than 20 amps in short bursts, such as a startup of a motor, a fan, something similar to that. But it's only rated to run at about 80% continuously. So if you're overloading that circuit breaker at 20 to 25, even on up amps for a long term, it may trip the circuit breaker. These are some of the things to check so you don't waste your time and money. If you found value, please, please hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel here and watch our next video here. And stay tuned for more electrical troubleshooting and how-to with Electrical U.